Now 31, let's go ahead and take a look at the quadratic formula. So we have the solutions to a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a does not equal zero, are given by the quadratic formula. And here it is. Now I want to just touch on touch base on this, right? We have our quadratic equation in standard form and it's set equal to zero. And it specifies here that a can't be zero. And the reason it can't be zero is, well, imagine if it was zero. If, if a was zero, then this term would go away and we would just have a linear equation. And solving a linear equation is different than solving a quadratic equation. All right, so here's the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you ever get a little bored, maybe you don't have plans on a Friday night, just Google quadratic formula song. There are plenty of videos up on YouTube where people like to sing this formula out um, to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. That's a pretty popular one. Um, Happy Birthday. There are other um, popular songs out there you can sing the quadratic formula to. I'm not going to do that for you. I just want you to know that, but if you Google it, you can see folks singing it. Um, I'll attach a video at the end of this, this example just for fun. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and start using the quadratic formula. We're going to solve this equation in two different ways. We're going to use the quadratic formula and then we're going to complete a square. And if you're solving a quadratic equation, it doesn't matter what method you use. And again, our three methods really we have that we can factor, right? Um, that's probably the one I use the most often. And then I'll try the quadratic formula. And then I would try completing the square. All right, these two always work, no matter what. That's the benefit in both of them. They're just a little bit messier. This one, if you're solid with factoring, you can get to the answer more quickly. If your quadratic factors. And that's a big if. A lot of quadratics are prime and so we can't do that. All right, so with this all being said, let's compare and contrast these two methods. So I'm gonna scooch this up because I think most of us know the quadratic formula. So let me get that uh, out of view for a little bit. But let's, let's go method one here. So I'm gonna put a one here and I'm just gonna put a little division line. So I'll do quadratic formula here, completing the square here. So if I'm going to do the quadratic formula, if I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve this equation, I would have x squared plus 6x. Now I need to move the 3 over because when you're using the quadratic formula, you want your quadratic equation in standard form. And when we use completing the square, we will actually leave this number on the right side of the equation. All right, so for this example, it looks like a is equal to 1, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to negative 3. So let's start using the quadratic formula. I'm going to have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. And I say all over two a because remember this fraction bar extends not just to this radical, but to this constant out in front of it. So if we look at this a little closer, we've got negative six plus or minus. I'm gonna do a little mental math. So six squared is 36, and then negative four times one times negative three is positive 12, so I'm looking at 36 plus 12 all over two. I'm gonna use my eraser, and I'm actually gonna go just to the next line over. So we have negative six plus or minus the square root of 48 over two. Now inside 48, um, what lives inside 48? Let me break it down since I'm not sure. So 48 I can think of as two and 24. This is six and four. This is two and two, and then two and three. So I see a pair of twos here, a pair of twos here, and a three left over. So really I have two times two times two times two. It looks like I have 16. So this is 16 times three. That's gonna come out as four root two. So I've got negative six plus or minus four root, not four root two, excuse me, four root three. The three is left over. So four root three all over two. Now I want you to be careful. I, I see it all the time where students get excited and they just cancel. They're like, oh, this just cancels and leave you, leaves you with a negative three. Don't forget the bunny ears. You need to divide the two into both parts. 
So let me go ahead, I'm gonna erase this because my canceling was not correct and I don't wanna have that on there. So negative six plus or minus four root three over two. Now I said you can use your little alien ears and cancel on each side. I wanna show you what you're technically doing just so we can have a little combo about that. Technically you're factoring out a two from the numerator and then those are dividing out. So that my end answer is negative three plus or minus two root three. Okay, so that's one version of doing this formula. I use the quadratic formula. And I just wanna point out this 48 right here. All right, we're gonna talk about the number under the radical in later examples. It gets its own vocab term. We would call this the discriminant. So for example five, the discriminant is 48. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna come up a little bit later on in this section. All right, so I'm gonna rework this problem. Well, I'm gonna rework solving this problem. So I should still get negative three plus or minus two root three, but I'm gonna go via completing the square. So let's try this second method here. So x squared plus six x, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space. The three is already on this side, that's great. So I do have my lead coefficient of one, fantastic. Let's go ahead and start completing the square. Half of the linear coefficient, half of six, is positive three. I always just put a little note there. Half is positive six, positive three. Positive three squared, nine. If I add nine to this side, I need to add nine to that side. Now, this will turn into the binomial x plus three. That's part of why I always write that little plus three up there. It just reminds me what to put here. This is going to be 12. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and square root both sides. Now, I've said before, these will cancel, but you need to remember to put the plus or minus. All right? We tend to forget that when you have an even index, you need to put the plus or minus there when you're taking a, a radical, like a square root or a fourth root. All right, 12, if I wanna break down 12, uh, 12 is relatively easy, right? We got, oops, I ran out of room. That's how easy it is. Okay, um, goes four and three, which is two, two. So I see a pair of twos, a three is gonna be left over. So we've got x plus three equaling plus or minus two root three. That's a good sign. I'm getting the same radical with the same coefficient in front of it. Now I need to subtract three over. So I'm ultimately gonna have negative three plus or minus two root three. Fantastic. So that's looking good. I've got the same answer either way. And I would actually make the argument that the completing the square was easier in this case than the quadratic formula. And I only mention that because I tend to favor the quadratic formula over completing the square. And this would be an example where I was wrong. All right, well, I wasn't wrong, but uh, this method would have been faster. I get the answer either way. Okay, so with that, let's try the quadratic formula again on example six. I'll see you in a few, bye.